This is the Rasp Tendo case. A Super Nintendo inspired case for the Raspberry Pi. I first seen uh, or heard about this on uh, YouTube on uh, video from uh, Drew Talks on his YouTube page. Um, I left a comment telling them, you know, hey, I saw this on your page, I decided to buy one. He said, hey, you gotta let me know how that, that, uh, you know, let me know how that, how that goes. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try and do a video on it and tell you my thoughts. Um, it, yeah, it took a, took a few weeks to ship here, uh, but I got it. Um, got it all set up, hooked up here, well, I don't have it hooked up, but I got it all put together here. It's nice, it's got working power and reset buttons, it does, you do push them in, so it, it doesn't slide like the, uh, the original Super Nintendo, so that's, uh, yeah, it would have been super cool if it did that. Instead, you kind of got to hold it in for a couple seconds to power it on. Um, but, you know, it's it's still cool. It's got functional power reset, and it's got USB ports right up front where the uh, controller ports would have been in the original Super Nintendo. Also super cool. I like it. Um... I will not be comparing it to the Super Tiny Tendo case, mainly because I do not have a Super Tiny Tendo case. Um, I mean, for 25 bucks, I, I could buy, like, a Nest Pi case, which is what I had this thing in originally before I put it into the Rasp Tendo case, and that thing does have functional power and reset buttons, so, um, yeah. Um, the Nest Pi case is great. Uh, I think Drew had called it the um, the best Raspberry Pi case on the market today, and it's kind of hard to argue with that. It is a phenomenal case. However, um, it didn't really um, match well with my favorite Raspberry Pi controller, which is the 8-bit Doe uh, SNES 30 gamepad. Um, Bluetooth here, uh, it's great, uh, looks just like the, uh, original Super Nintendo controller, uh, but, you know, with Bluetooth. Awesome, awesome controller. Love this thing, and, um, yeah, this definitely, um, kind of matches the color scheme of my favorite controller there, so now I have my SNES inspired controller with my SNES inspired Raspberry Pi case uh, with the power and reset buttons. Um, now it's definitely not without its flaws though and uh, one thing being that there's uh, these two USB ports in the front they're the only ones available the other ones are covered up um, as you can see, so is the RJ45 jack. Uh, I know Drew had mentioned a couple times about how he does not like the placement of the RJ45 jack on the uh, Nest Pi case, but let me tell you, the placement of the, the RJ45 jack on this, far, far worse. This is totally a, a bad design choice, in my opinion. Um, wasn't really a deal breaker for me because I use mine on Wi-Fi anyways. However, I can definitely see how that this uh, this uh, RJ45 jack would definitely uh, turn some people away from a case like this. Um, let me see if I can show you a little better here. See, I got this port covered up by this little piece of plastic here. Um, however, you can. When you put the thing together, opt to take this out. Um, unfortunately, it does not open once the the, uh, the case is, has been screwed and put together. So yeah, that's kind of set in place right now, so I can't really show you. I decided to keep mine covered because, you know, I was using mine with the Wi-Fi and not 
the Ethernet cable. But yeah, um, if you do want to set it up with an Ethernet, I didn't even try to put an Ethernet cable in there basically because I was afraid I would not be able to get it out because of the way it sets in here back so far because they had to make room for the uh, the little USB extenders which go up to the front here. So yeah, this RJ45 jack or lack thereof, total bad design choice in my opinion, um, but not a deal breaker for me. So yeah, um, I, I still like it, but I could see how yeah some people would definitely not like this case for that reason. Um, yeah, it, it definitely seems like it would be very awkward to get an Ethernet cable in there, and even more awkward to get it out. You'd probably need some tweezers or something. I wouldn't even know. Um, yeah. Also, I did have a very hard time putting this case together. Uh, I didn't seem to all want to fit quite right. Um, I did strip one screw very badly when putting this thing in. Uh, I had to break out the power tools and uh, get that screw out of there, which was not easy. Um, I was able to replace that screw with uh, one of the ones from my old uh, Nespi case, though, so yeah, I certainly didn't want to cannibalize that Nespi case, but uh, well, I mean, I guess I could still reuse it if I want. Um, but yeah, right now I got my Raspberry Pi in the Raspendo case. Um, probably should have just bought another Raspberry Pi, because, you know, why not? You can never have too many Pies, right? Um, the biggest thing that I do not like about this unit, though, and I will show you here. Hopefully you can see it on the camera. Hmm. Let's see if I can plug this thing in. Doing this one-handed here. It's a little difficult. <laughs> All right. I got to use two hands here because I cannot do this with one hand. And hopefully you'll be able to see it. Yeah, once this thing is turned on, look at that. Look at that. Just look. Oh my god. What the living crap. You can literally see the LED lights from the Raspberry Pi right through the plastic on that case. That is ugly. Yeah, that right there, oh my god. Ugh, I mean, yeah, I suppose I could just turn it around and no one will see it, but yeah, it's got an LED light right there, and yet the power light from the Pi itself bleeds right through that plastic. Um, it's probably not hurting anything, except my eyes, because that is an eyesore. That is just plain awful. I, uh, like, how cheaply, how cheap is this plastic that the light from this thing just bleeds right through here? <sighs> that is really disappointing. Um... I may have to take this thing apart again and see if I can do something about that light. Uh, I might have to put a piece of tape over it or something because um, it's definitely not an elegant solution, but I certainly haven't found a software solution to that yet. Um, yeah. That's just... that's... That's crazy to me. Ugh. Well, anyways, 
that's my thoughts on the Raspendo case. Uh, if you like it, dislike it, have any other thoughts, feel free to leave a comment. No, I'm not a professional YouTuber, so, you know, I didn't do an unboxing video or anything for this. Um, I was kind of tempted to, but, you know, I don't really have the tools or the time. And ETA Prime already did a great unboxing video, so I definitely uh, suggest that you go check out his if you haven't. Um, Alright. Thanks for watching.